I just finished the Bliss Afghan yesterday and <laughs> photographing it this morning and doing a short video as well just to show it to you. Um, I made 20 inch squares. So this pattern begins with a circle and then it is shaped into a square. And then I joined them together with whip stitch and I made a total of 12 of them. So the actual blanket is um, quite a nice size, so it fits on our bed. And our 16th wedding anniversary is coming up in March. So it's a bit of a present for myself and my husband. So um, I've got a demo, demo video that I've created that also will show some of the stitches um, of how the textures are created and give you some tips on uh, how to work the pattern. So um, I hope that you enjoy this one. So again, it's the Bliss Afghan. So I think Wedded Bliss or just happy, happiness. And um, it looks lovely in this beautiful white um, neutral color, but I think it'll look lovely in a variety of colors. And I just want to show you the edging. So instead of just doing a typical ribbed edging, which I often do, um, and you could use that um, ribbed edging because I actually love that edging, but I decided to do something different for you. So I basically used the same textures that I used in the center for the edging. Um, and it just gives it a little bit of a slight, a slight ruffled effect. So, um, and you could also make it a bit wider if you wanted to, but I did, um, about three rounds for an edging there. So I thought it looked quite nice. And I like to give you a variety of options, um, besides just using always the same ribbed edging. Um, so you have something new to, um, try and experiment with. So, um, hopefully you'll enjoy working this pattern and, um, it really was a labor of love, but to be honest, each square took me about a day to complete. So in theory, if you had 12 days, you could make it in 12 days. It's not very long. So a couple weeks, give yourself a month, you could make a beautiful blanket. Um, I used Iran wor worsted weight yarn and a K hook and it'd be lovely to try this with some different yarn weights and see how they turn out. Hi, this is Lisa with Holland Designs Crochet. I am showing you today some of the stitches used in the new Bliss Afghan. This is from my 2023 Afghan Club. You can see this one has some really interesting textures. I'm going to demonstrate for you how that's done. So this pattern is worked mostly with um, half double crochets and triple crochets or treble crochets. And so on this round, this has a stitch that's just called a front post half double crochet two together and it is worked under two posts at the same time so I'm going to just demonstrate that for you right now so a front post half double crochet you yarn over you insert in this case under two posts yarn over and pull up your loop yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook and I'm also then working a second half double crochet in the same place or a second front post half double crochet in that same place and that is what creates that really lovely texture. And so I'll just do a few more repetitions of this round for you. This is round three of the pattern. So um, you can get the written instructions and you'll see what your stitch counts need to be and all the instructions. I'm just demonstrating for you what a front post half double crochet together stitch is. And this is used throughout the pattern. So there'll be other rounds with the same type of texture. And I also use this on the edging of this blanket. So it gives it a really lovely sort of a ruffled, um, puckered, beautiful sort of effect. So I really enjoy using this unique texture. It's actually quite simple to work. So as I complete this round, um, the only thing I would suggest is just make sure that your stitch counts are accurate as is important with any pattern, but particularly with this one, since um, it begins by creating a circle and then it is later turned into a square it's just really important that the stitch counts are accurate so you get the right shape. And so when I get to the end of this round, you can see I've come down to having my last two post stitches here and everything has worked out correctly. So I had gone from 30 triple crochets um, to now having 40 stitches on this round. And I just joined with a slip stitch at the top of that beginning of chain two. So that is the completion of round three. Okay, I'm working now on round six. 
you can see how pretty this texture is in the neutral color. It really pops and the light catching it in the shadows, it's quite a pretty, um, pretty texture. So again, on this round, we're working half double crochet and then also the front post half double crochet two together. And we're working again, two of those around the same two posts. And we just continue that all the way around. On this round, we have 80 stitches. So our circle is increasing. And actually this works out pretty quickly the first few rounds of this pattern. Um, so you can see some progress being made quite quickly. Um, I used a Iran worsted weight yarn and a K-hook for this sample and my finished squares were measured about 20 inches wide. So if you do use a different yarn weight and a different hook, you will probably end up with sm a smaller square. Um, so you can decide on that or try a few different yarns and different hooks. So um, next round, now that I've completed round six, I'm just going to go ahead and work a round of single crochet. So I'll come back and show you what it looks like as I get further in the pattern and you can see a bit more of the texture. And then I'll also demonstrate for you how we be begin to make the square. So we're going to end up creating four corners and turning this circle into a square. Okay, I've worked a few more rounds and I'm now up to round 10. Round 10 is where we create, begin to create the square. So we have four chain two loops that are four corners that we're going to be uh, using as we continue now. And the very last um, corner of this round, instead of just being a chain two and a join, instead we are working a join with half double crochet. So you just work a half double crochet into the last into this uh, first single crochet of the round and that creates our last corner. And the reason we do, we do this is because we want to have our join always be in the corner or in a corner so that it's not visible. So um, that's what we've done there. So that joining technique will be continue to, continue to be used. Uh, we'll join with a half double crochet like that. And now as I begin the next round I've done a, a chain one and I'm going to be working half double crochets on this round. So I work a half double crochet into that chain two corner. And then as this round continues, I'm working using what is uh, being termed a cross half double crochet. So we are working into the single crochet stitches and we work this by skipping the first stitch, working a half double crochet into the second single crochet, and then working right back into that skipped single crochet and working a half double crochet there as well. So it's just um, two half double crochets, but they're just worked in the in a crossed manner like that. And as this round begins, we're working a total of 12 um, half double crochets or six crossed half double crochets. So I'll just complete those. And that's my fifth one and my sixth. And then as we are continuing to create a square shape, we've got some shorter stitches here. We're ending up working six single crochets. And then we go again into the taller crossed half double crochets. And so as we do this on each round, we are going to continue to shape the square. So the actual completed square shape won't be visible um, entirely until you get to the end and you've completely finished the square. So it'll, it might look a bit misshapen as you're working each round, but when you do finally complete it, it will be square. And as with any uh, motif that you're making are square. You can block them as well to make sure they're just exactly the way that you like them. Um, but I didn't have to block mine, especially when I joined them together. It really helped them keep their shape very well, so I didn't have to block. But of course you can do that if you'd like, and there's plenty of YouTube videos 
around that you can look at for blocking techniques. Okay, so that's my first side of the square. You can see, of course, I started with a half double crochet in that corner. I did my crossed half double crochets. I did my single crochets. Again, I did six crossed half double crochets. And then when I get to this chain two corner, I'm just working a half double crochet and chain two for the next corner and a half double crochet in that same space. And that's basically this round. Um, I'll just continue doing that all the way around. Okay, this is the end of round 11, and I've come to my final corner where I am again going to join with a half double crochet in the first half double crochet of the round. So that's my final corner of round 11. And now as I begin round 12, I'm going to be working single crochet on this particular round. So I'm going to start with a single crochet in this corner. And then I'm going to be creating some beautiful ribbing on this round. And to do that, I'm working into the half double crochet stitches here, but I am working not into, not into the front and back loops, um, but I'm working into a lower loop. You can see here at the back. Do you kind of see if I flip it over, you can see there's a lower loop. Um, I'm term terming it a back lower loop since it's on the back of the work. You can see that there. And so those are the loops that we're working into when we're working across the half double crochets. And when we get to the single crochets, we're just working into both loops as usual. But to create that ribbing, again, working into this back lower loop. And the first one, um, we just work a single crochet in that back lower loop. And hopefully you can see exactly what I'm doing here, just a single crochet in those. And we're going to have 13 of them all together. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And then from there you go into the single crochets and you just work your six single crochets that you had at the center. So the stitch count um, for the single crochets in the middle between the half double crochets remains the same on this round. As we continue it'll vary. So I will be adding round, adding stitches on each round. We'll have more single crochets in the center. But you can just see how that texture is developed there, that ribbing. And so then I'll just continue on and work my single crochets in the back lower loops only of the next 13 half double crochets. That's my four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then I'll be at the corner and I'll work a single crochet, a chain two, and a single crochet for the corner. And so I simply want to point out just that every round when you're working the single crochet rounds where you have the ribbing, there's always going to be 13 worked in back loops only along each side of the corner. So on each section of the coming out from a corner, you're going to have 13 half double crochets that you'd worked that have 13 single crochets worked in back lower loops only. And then you'll have single crochets in the middle and again, 13 here. So it's just important to kind of count them, make sure that you're accurate in your stitch count. That That's why I'm pointing that out. And then when you come out and you start working the next 13, um, the only thing I want to point out is that this first half double crochet here is a little bit more hidden within the, the corner. Um, and that is because, like for instance, this first one here, there was a chain one before the half double crochet. So it was, wasn't was hidden. It was more obvious and quite easy to find. So I'm just mentioning this so that you're very you're sure to not miss the first um, 
back lower loop only of that first half double crochet. So just make sure you find that when you're coming out of uh, the other corners um, so you don't miss it. Because if you did, you know, your stitch count would end up being off and you'd only end up with 12. So just make sure not to miss that first one. And everything else is exactly the same. So just pay attention to the stitch count on this round and, of course, all the rounds. And then you'll be all good. And again, when we get to the end of this round, we're going to once again join with the half double crochet in the first single crochet of the round. <laughs> 